Usually cars drive on road, but sometimes we need to flip the switch and change it to off road. The reasons may be different, but the solutions are also different. You can go on off-road on a regular sedan, like a Toyota Corolla, you can go to a higher level and take an SUV, or even higher and take a Jeep, to drive without problems anywhere. It's like if you go on a hike and choose what to wear. You can go in ordinary sneakers, trekking shoes or boots. The choice is yours. But the problem is, will it really be appropriate and comfortable at the same time? Should you wear boots if you have trekking shoes? And is it worth taking a Jeep if you have an SUV? That's what this video is about. Can a regular SUV overcome various obstacles on the off-road and get you to your destination? And if not, what does it need? Starting with the simplest, let's distinguish the cars that will participate in the test. The first is an everyday car, a Toyota Corolla. The second is a RAV4 SUV. And the third is the Gavril Roamer a large off-roader. Now let's see where and in what conditions the cars will be tested. Coincidentally, I am now in the mountains and I will show you in practice what we face on the off-road. The first thing we come across on the off-road is mud. Simple, solid and dirty. The first problem with the mud is the contact area between the wheel and the surface. That is, if the wheel is narrow, it will simply sink into the mud and end of the story. That is, the first sign that the car is for off-road is wide wheels with additional ribs for the better traction in the mud. The second problem is that if the car does not have all-wheel drive, then even large wheels on only one axle will begin to spin in the mud and the car will not get enough traction from all sides and will get stuck. The third problem is differentials. Even a car with all-wheel drive can get stuck with one wheel in the mud and the differential will send all the torque to it and it will start spin. That is, we need either a limited slip differential or a locking differential. That means even from very beginning we got three key features. Wide wheels, all-wheel drive and limited slip differential. Now let's conduct the first test. These three cars will drive through a strip of light mud at speed. Let's see what the difference will be in the end. At first the cars with stabilization will go with it on, but later we will do the same test with stabilization system off. And the Corolla's result is 14.7 seconds. Now it's the turn of the Toyota RAV4. The high ground clearance and all-wheel drive do their job and the car is driving much more confidently and faster and its result is two times less. Next is the Gabriel Rummer, more ground clearance, better tires and an easy result of 5.3 seconds. Now let's do the same thing but with the stabilization system off. As I expected the Corolla passed better with result in 9.6 seconds because the wheels were not limited by stabilization. The Toyota RAV4's result also improved by one second. And in the end, we have these results. The next step we face on off-road is sand. Just like with mud, but it's more fluid and slippery. Everything that is important for mud is important for it. But in addition, another driving mode is added, if it's available in the car. Newer cars are equipped with different driving modes, such as comfort, sport, and some for off-road, like mud, sand and snow. In general, these mods will change the behavior of the stabilization systems. The electronics will monitor the slippage of the wheels and, if necessary, will block them. Our cars on the test don't have such features, but we still will put it on the list of desirable features for your ideal off-roader. Another problem is rocks. This is where it gets more interesting. You can just handle it with wide wheels. On rocks, you begin to realize what a regular SUV lacks. And it lacks a ground clearance.
Ground clearance is a minimum distance between the bottom of the car and the road surface. It is something that really affects the possibility of the car. It is very easy to get stuck with the bottom of your car on some bump or stone. How can you increase ground clearance? Larger wheels are the easiest option. A more difficult one is to modify the suspension of the car. Also, another problem arises on stones. The protection of the bottom of the car. No matter how high the ground clearance is, the chance of hitting a rock with the bottom of the car is quite high. And in that case, the car will need engine protection. Therefore, on off-road cars you can often see metal plates that are located under the engine to protect it. That is, from the stage of stones we have two additional characteristics. Higher ground clearance, meaning even larger wheels or modified suspension, and bottom protection. During the test we can see that the Corolla immediately got stuck on the rocks. The RAV4 is a little hard to move, but thanks to the higher ground clearance and all-wheel drive it was able to overcome this difficult obstacle. And the armor didn't feel the change in the road surface at all. And another problem we face with the off-road is the angles of approach and dismount. In short, it's about bumpers. Such a bumper on the off-road is just terrible. If a car with this bumper drives up a hill, it will most likely hit and break it. That's why small metal bumpers are most often put on cars for off-road use. Their task is simply to protect the car when hit from the front or rear. So we have to add to the characteristics appropriate approach and dismount angles. The next and probably the last stage is water and the level of the Ford. It's hard to estimate what will be enough for the car, so just the more, the better. The newest Range Rover Defender has a very high level of 100 cm. But in ordinary cars, for example Toyota RAV4, it is 50 cm. Therefore, it is simply important to know what level of Ford your car can handle, because in case of failure you can severely damage the engine and other important parts of the car. Also we have to add one very important parameter – a spare tire. No matter how powerful your car is, there is still a chance of a flat tire and in order not to get stuck in the middle of the road, it is important to have a full-size spare tire in the car. In the conclusion we have the following specifications. I have divided them into mandatory and less important ones. The must-have ones – all-wheel drive, ground clearance of more than 20 cm, wheels with the good tires for traction, large approach and departure angles, and a full-size spare tire. And from the additional ones, if you really want to drive anywhere, it's locking differentials, improved suspension, different driving modes, and knowledge of the level of boarding that your car can handle. I also want to ask you one question. Should the car for off-road use be only with a manual transmission, or will automatic ones also work? Because the driver on off-road should control the number of revolutions at which to shift the gear, but the automatic transmission can be switched to a manual mode. What do you think about this? Write in the comments, I will be very glad to hear your opinion. Well, in general that's all. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please like it, because it helps a lot in the development of the channel. If something was wrong, I'm sorry. Have a great day and see you soon.